In this video, we will go over the design of an 8-bit microprocessor. This microprocessor is comprised of nine different components. We have the A register, the adder subtractor, the B register, output register, program counter, memory access register, RAM, instruction register, and controller. With the use of tri-state buffers, for most modules, we'll be able to control the transfer of information from one module to another. This will be done by using control signals, which in the controller will determine the functions to be completed by the microprocessor. Starting with the A register, we will descend the hierarchy and we will see there is a set of inputs from the data bus. When the control signal AI is high, is low, um, the, in, the data from the data bus will enter the register. Depending on whether or not we would like to output this information back onto the bus, we have this tri-state buffer device, the 74LS245. When this signal is low, a when AO is low, then the information is sent back onto the data bus. This register also serves as the first input to the adder subtractor device. Next is the adder subtractor. This is in charge of performing arithmetic on the microprocessor. We have two sets of inputs, and a set of inputs from the A register, another set from the B register. The inputs from the B register go through a series of XOR gates, which when looked at in conjunction with the subtraction signal, if sub is zero, addition will be performed, and if sub is one, subtraction will be performed. These inputs are set onto two 4-bit adders. Um, the carry out of the first adder is sent to the carry in of the next. The output of the adder subtractor is also sent to a set of tri-state buffers, which when the control signal is active will send this data back onto the data bus. The B register is similar to the A register, except we are not giving the register the ability to send the information back onto the data bus. Whatever is being passed through the register is going to be sent directly to the adder subtractor. The output register kind of doubles as the display in this project. Um, we are using a 74LS273 octal buffer to determine when the data from the bus should just be passed through directly to the LEDs. Um, using this uh, control signal OI, when the clock is high, when it's rising, um, it'll send a positive signal to the clock which will pass the value straight through. The next device is the program counter. It is in charge of counting, stepping through the program from addresses 0000 to 1111. This device will transmit the address of the next instruction to the memory access register. A capability that was added to this device was the ability to jump from address to address and enable loops in the program with this control signal CI.
the memory access register uh, takes the output of the program counter and sends it to RAM to read the memory contents in that specific location. That's what these last four outputs are. These, are, these indicate the address in RAM in which the um, program is to access the memory contents. RAM. So with RAM, uh, there is another capability added. Um, the user can either pre-program the device or they can store information from the accumulator or any other register back into a location in memory. So the inputs from the memory access register will serve as the execution address and it will locate the memory contents within the device and will send it to be read and it will be read and output onto the bus. As I was mentioning earlier, since we are also using a store function, we can choose which inputs to read from. So it's either the inputs that were manually programmed, which were I0, I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, I6, I7, uh, or the data from the data bus, which will be from a register, for example, the A register. When RI is high, it'll access the contents of the bus and write it to memory. The instruction register. This device is in charge of letting us know what instruction is going to be executed during that instruction cycle. The contents from RAM have been inputted onto the bus and are sent to the instruction register when the signal II is low. The most significant bits will be sent to the controller to decode which instruction is being executed, and the least four significant bits will be sent back onto the data bus, which will point to a memory location in which the data is to be accessed. The most important part of this microcontroller, in order to use all the functions, you will need a control unit to dictate which signals would be active um, during each clock cycle. So the four bits from the instruction register are sent to a decoder. For this microprocessor, we are using a 4 to 16 decoder. Uh, since we are only dealing with eight instructions, by default, I set the remainder, remaining outputs of the decoder to the no operation function. Above, you will see a ring counter. Similar to a shift register, it'll indicate what state the program is in. So during the first state, a certain signal will be active then it jumps to the next one, and so on. Based on the state, you see a, this is our control matrix. Um, at the end here, it's hard to see, um, there are, these are the control signals that are the outputs, and these outputs will be the inputs for each of the modules to control um, the actions of the microprocessor.